you're still partying like it's the 1990s, then you'll likely love today's list. Is made. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 Britpop anthems. For this list, we've looked at bands and songs that were at the forefront of the Britpop movement, which erupted toward the end of the last century. A British answer to the emerging grunge genre in the USA, these songs speak to the working classes predominantly and include heavy UK-specific cultural references. Number 10. Wake up, boo. The Boo Radleys. If there's one thing that underlines the optimism of this genre most clearly, it's this one. Set within the switching of the seasons from summer to autumn, and featuring support from bubbly a cappella backing vocals, this song became a top 10 single for the band off their highest charting album, Wake Up. A blatant battle cry for all of Britpop, this band had achieved critical acclaim before this record, and massive popularity after it. Number 9. Connection, Elastica. The great British guitar sound saunters through our next record as stylishly as it did in the 60s, 70s, or any other era we'd care to mention. Is made. Elastica may not have mounted as awesome an assault on the mainstream charts as some of the other bands of the time, but with Connection, they laid down a record which really made its mark. It came closer than almost everything else to bridging the Britpop grunge gap, and it ensured that Elastica's reputation stretched into the next century. Number 8. Tatva, Kula Shaker. With a Sanskrit title that can mean reality or truth, this is a song that stays within the Britpop genre but heavily bends its boundaries. Released on Kula's debut album, it quickly became one of the band's best-known records. Tatva has an obvious eastern edge that sets it apart from other tracks of the era, however, Crispy and Mill's accented tones ensure its Britishness remains accentuated. An alternative, slightly psychedelic tune, it searches for the truth and it finds the most fashionable of statements. Number 7. A Design for Life. Manic Street Preachers. The Britpop Pride of Wales, A Design for Life is the Manic Street Preachers' signature society critiquing tune. first song written following the unsolved disappearance of guitarist Richie Edwards, it's also credited as the track that enabled the Preachers to continue playing without their primary lyricist on board. Picking apart the problems with the British class system and putting the world to rights through the magnificent medium of rock and roll, a design for life is a blueprint for Britpop. Number 6. 
animal nitrate, suede. Of course, not all Britpop was bouncy and full of joys of summer, and our next record attempted to put the record straight more than most. Animal Nitrate, Suede combined the worlds of drug use, the working class, and homosexuality to produce a provocative and challenging song that surprised even the band themselves when it earned mainstream airtime and success. Clearly there's a lot to be said for a catchy chorus and memorable hook. It's a sing-along social protest. Number 5. All Right, Supergrass. We are young, we run green, we got tea. When these guys weren't getting caught by the fuzz, they were feeling all right and making us all feel the same. We're back to the bouncy with the one and only First Class Supergrass. Gas Coombs and the boys somewhat stumbled onto their signature song, penning the feel-good verses in a matter of minutes and collecting the piano patter in just a few moments more. All Right is everything that's good about being young, and it encapsulates most of what Britpop's all about. Number four, Park Life, Blur. Confidence is a preference for the habitual voyeur of what is known as. One of the most influential bands within the genre, a whole list of Blur songs might have made this catchy countdown. Girls and Boys was for many where Britpop all began, while the Universal was a glimpse into the future, over which Britpop quickly became quite obsessed. Well, it will. But for a sheer sound of the times tune, look no further than Park Life. This track inspired close inspection of the masses, a manifesto led by none other than actor Phil Daniels from the film Quadrophenia, and was a working class call to arms that we all listened to. Number three, common people, pulp. She came from Greece, she had a thirst for knowledge. She studied sculpture at St. Martin's College, that's what I. Another inhabitant of Britpop's upper echelons, pulp's Disco 2000 was Anthem Enough. Let's all meet up in the year 2000. Won't be strange when we're all fully grown. Frontman Jarvis Cocker and company had an even cleverer, catchier, classier trick up their famously flamboyant sleeves. You wanna live like common people You wanna see whatever common people see Common People was park life with even more satirical sense. Pulp knew the people they represented, and they knew the people that they didn't. Basically, if you watched Roaches Climb the Wall and your parents could do absolutely nothing to help you out, then this record was for you. And it was to be sung with pride. Number two, Live Forever, Oasis. Maybe I don't really want to know how you got Considered alongside Blur as the biggest and most successful Britpop act ever, Oasis also had a back catalogue that might have filled this countdown single-handedly. Don't, don't 
Look Back and Anger and Wonderwall are two especially timeless 90s records. But it definitely maybe all started with Live Forever. From Liam's opening snarl to Noel nailing the guitar solo. It's as anti-grunge as it gets, and the shakeup that rock music was crying out for. After listening to this, who wouldn't want to do as the title says? Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Number one, Bittersweet Symphony, The Verb. Fanfare, please. From its open to its close, this record is about as iconic a British rock track as has ever been produced. The hook, the memorable lyrics, the forever parodied video accompaniment, it was a song that put the Verve on the map, although it didn't put a lot in their pay pocket. The orchestral piece is actually lifted from a Rolling Stones record, meaning that Mick Jagger made more off of Bittersweet Symphony than Richard Ashcroft did. An ironic realization of the song's title, it tops our tree anyway. Do you agree with our list? No, no, no. Which Britpop anthem did we overlook? For more 90s-centric top 10s published daily, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. See you